Steam gentlemen, assemble. Bring it all together. We are here back in the headquarters. We are working still on our Super Bowl commercial. We need to make sure that we get one of those out for next year uh, that look half as cool as admittedly, you know, the, the controversial DC film. Uh, but it was really cool to see Michael Keaton as Batman again, wasn't mm -hmm. it? That was yeah. just pretty. All just, seven versions. That, yeah, Spoiler exactly. Alert. Well, yeah, it's, you know, by the way, so far, we also just saw it. It was called, it was called Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, better late than never, DC. We get yeah, it. Yeah, but did it star a convicted felon? I, you know, yeah. and that's exactly, you know, and a legit groomer. I mean, that's the insult that everyone loves to throw around today. And this guy actually is. You know? Wait, who's a groomer? So, uh, Ezra, uh, what's his name? Uh, Miller. Uh, Ezra Miller. Yeah, the uh, he's the uh, he's the Flash. He uh, yeah he's oh. yeah. Go 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 hit the Google. It might just of course. Then again, it might put you on a few watch lists. I'm not sure. I mean, at, at uh, a certain point, what the uh, fuck do you need to do to get arrested? I don't need if tips. you are certain shades because this dude has literally gone through the hit list and. Yeah. And, and authorities are still like, ah, what can you do? He's the Flash. You know? right. Come on. Come yeah. on. We're pulling Come for on. the DCU over here. Come on. Little it's guy. Vermont. Come on. What are you going to do? Um, so we got that. I just wanted to also, you know, a uh, quick update. Apparently, we're being invaded by UFOs, and the U.S. Air Force and is shooting them down on the regular. <laughs> um, you all know, all the time, all the time. We may uh, want to tell the people or remind people what UFO actually stands for. Unidentified flying object. Uh, so we get that. Yep. So that's happening, and Rihanna's pregnant. So coincidence? I'm just asking the questions here, people. Is right. it, You know, is it is it really? You know, it, look at you, God. How do we know? That's it, right? Uh, you know, um, we saw this game before. It was a right. whole religion that came That's after it. True. But I'm I'm sitting here with my coffee, and I've got the sign out in front of the fold up, uh, the the fold up table that says that was a that was kick ass. Who's coffee? Who's the sign? Uh, the the sign the sign reads. Here's the legend on it. It reads that was a kick ass halftime show prove me wrong and i'm sitting there with a little cup of coffee i i am the living embodiment of the meme i liked the mm -hmm. halftime show i'm gonna say it maybe i've sounded like a kiss ass right now but nah, yeah like no it. rihanna cares rihanna care yeah absolutely she, she was waiting she was waiting for you to say something <laughs> she was waiting on with bated breath on that she's movie. waiting for this episode i heard she wasn't gonna do the show unless she was gonna hear that i, I you know I, i'm glad to know that standards are kept uh out there in 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 La La I am for clamped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, no, hey, like I just I thought they actually did a different a different concept that we've done years prior. I like the 90s hip hop review that we had last year. That was pretty kick ass too. I really liked that and enjoyed that. But since they were featuring one artist, I liked the idea, I liked the platforms and you know, a little more minimalist. We didn't have left shark. Got you know, we we didn't have the glory of left shark. So but, definitely not right either. Yeah, also true. <laughs> why I mean, we always got why we always got to talk about left shark, not right shark. I mean, I mean without it, it, right shark, you wouldn't understand how awesome left shark was. So frankly, it's true. you know, it's the yang to the yang. Because what was true. who was that that did the sharks? I forgot. Katy who, Perry. Was, Katy Perry. Katy Perry did the sharks. Didn't understand the sharks, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, well, it was what? part of the motif that she had. It was like a beach summer thing going on. Yeah, don't dance with the sharks, kids. <laughs> Good advice. They're fucking sharks. Don't dance Career with the sharks. Tips. Career tips. Career yeah. tips. Don't, yeah. don't dance with the fucking sharks. That's, that's definitely a pro tip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just also want to give us somewhat credit that you just heard three straight men talk about a variety of different uh, Super Bowl halftime shows. I just want to give us some credit there. Come on. We're hip. We're on it. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're up with the culture. We're good. You know, yeah, look, yeah. it's, it's not going to be on my card, but I swear to God, every year there's at least a gaggle of men talking about, uh, halftime, Super Bowl halftime shows and ranking them. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's really putting us out there. 
I guess I don't know. It's usually I feel like I feel like the men are always the one who are dogging on it, but you know, that was terrible. Oh my god, I hated that one. Like that. Uh, well, because most of the time, and I mean, let's be honest, it's still the case. It's an interruption to the game. And if you're actually a football fan, it's annoying trying to watch some football and everybody else is just looking forward to the commercials and the halftime show at your Super Bowl party. Well, let's that's why you don't have a party. I mean, you can't avoid it. So just yeah, without them, it's like you and one other bro. You don't have a party. Just lean in and just yeah, just just lean in. Just lean in. in. And you know what? Rihanna's adorable. And all of the dancers reminded me of the Beijing Olympics. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Or sperm cells, but whatever. There was that, you know. Well, okay, a lot of people I mean, it was, made it was the, the sperm connection. I mean, come on, yeah, there was they're all people. running after her, and she's pregnant. I mean, I think she was literally trying to tell us, and we were just like, "Nah, come on, she's just you know, a little postpartum." No, the woman is literally trying to say, "Hey, no, I am pregnant again." I am pregnant <laughs> again. <laughs> if one of all right, here's my thing, and I pointed this out when somebody else pointed out the sperm thing, and I was like, "All right, fine, but one of them needs to get her." At least one needs to actually get her. I thought that's when Jay Z was going to come into it. I, yeah, yeah, I thought Jay Z was, was going to come up. in in like a white outfit with like a pointy hat or so, or maybe not a pointy hat, but you see what I'm saying? Maybe yeah, like okay. a tail, you know, yeah, I'm not an expert, jump up but... on the stage and just like hug her and then, you know, make the, you know what I'm saying? Like the sperm um, were to, everywhere. Close the circle is what you're except saying. Except near the egg. Is what well, I'm, I'm not I'm not an expert, but if someone's already pregnant, then technically what we saw is literally what would happen, which is sperm is going to be there. <laughs> they ain't going to actually do anything. No home Good for point. sperm. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. No, yeah. no Close home for, for sperm. Close for business. Knock it off. Yeah. Get out of here. That, too bad for you. Well, you know, that just I read some stat that you have the odds of winning the lottery like two or three times. Uh, more it's that that is more likely than you being born in the first place so there you go that's pretty cool there that's just, just my thoughts yeah. you know that was my deep thought for the day since we're talking about that you know that was intense uh, and, and the uh, yeah uh, well you know occasionally the bird man comes you know reaches way back into that weird ass vault of a mind of his and mm-hmm. something like that a, something like that comes out but, drops knowledge like a sum of a bitch there we go. We are the steam gentlemen. We are here. We are back. We are ready to, you know, just keep dropping more knowledge bombs on you today. It's going to be that kind of a day. Uh, real quick, while I have you here at the top of the show, just want to encourage you to head on over to iTunes, uh, rate and review the show. Help us go, uh, help us climb the charts. I'm seeing the, those downloads coming in, guys. You're doing great. We love you, steam people. We're seeing you there coast to coast. Uh, we finally got a listener in New Hampshire. Thank you, New Hampshire. I mean, you're only in our home. You're only you're only in our home quadrant. Thanks a lot. Um, so you know, awesome. A listener from New Hampshire. Please stay with the us. Hamp. Please, please stay with us. Uh, so we're yep. happy there. Uh, make sure to rate and review us. Make sure to follow us uh, on our socials. We are Do You Even Steam Bro on uh, Instagram, and we are the Steam Gentleman Podcast on Facebook. So that's the business. That's out of the way. That's front and center out of the way. Hold on to your seats, folks. We're changing up the format a little bit today. We are pop culture. We are social commentary. So we're going to come at it a little more from the social commentary end of things today. But do not worry. Do not fret your pretty little head. We are still going to be bringing the pop culture references. I absolutely promise you on that one. But we go back and forth. I say we because this is the three of us. It is the triumvirate of geek. We come here. We assemble and we formed this little council. And Rashawn had a great idea that it is our Black History Month, and we do like to focus on Black history uh, during this uh, during the during the month of February, as it should be. And he came up with a fantastic idea that we all play Black History Bingo, kind of like Beach Blanket Bingo, but there's no Annette Funicello. You know, mm-hmm. just saying. Exactly right. Hey, you got it. I told you to be pop culture references, kids. For the few, for the for the non Gen X and non Boomers listening to us, go Google it. It, it was a movie. It, it happened. They used to do you, you know. You've had internet and cable by. your whole life. Yeah, there's that. There was literally a movie in that genre called How to How to How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. I believe was the title of it. Yes, they somebody came in and pitched that as a script. I really and well, that one. It, it did seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear the other options yeah i know <laughs> <You really want laughs> <to happen. laughs> 
All right, assault. We'll just call it assault. They'll just chase her all down the beach. No, 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 too much, too much. Nope. All right. Uh, but going on, we, we had that idea. Or actually, Rashawn had that idea uh, that we're going to go around and we're going to play a little bingo uh, with the subject matter being subjects and things that you might hear during Black History Month. Uh, we want to go one at a time, take our time, see if we can cross-reference and see if we can come up with the same subjects. And if anyone of here is lucky enough to get a bingo, uh, we will win the 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 love and adoration of our fellow esteemed gentlemen. Is that right, Rashawn? Is that is that what's on the table? That is not what I wrote down for prizes, but uh, oh. we'll go with it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to have to go back to the prize committee. <laughs> Yeah, gonna have I, to talk I, to him again. I ain't got no more money. Oh, money. You know, well, I, Greg's, Greg's right. a little uh, pissed. Our lower ears will take care of that. He, Greg, I'm Greg's sorry. a little. Uh, Greg's a little pissed. He 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 heard me playing bingo, and he's never played bingo before. He remembers it from television shows, uh, but he totally thought remember it from TV shows. Yeah. Well, you 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 called out uh, Breaking Bad, so we had that we had that reference. And yeah, by the way, gotta love that they used. All the characters from Bacon Breaking Bad to sell popcorn or chips. I all all the characters or three of them? Three of them. Sorry. You know, you can't get maybe maybe the entire show. But the fact that they got Puko in that commercial. They got Tuco in that commercial. Um yeah, Earthquake was too busy. <laughs> Still, that's that's some pretty next level shit. I have to um, say, as the only person who'll happily admit that I have a massive crush on Skylar White, I need to oh, see yeah. Anna oh. Gunn in something. What? What do you mean? You're the only person who admit that Skylar's? Yeah, are you kidding me? No, People yeah, no, you can't have that. <laughs> that's all you. Yeah, all right. please, I'll take it. Yes, happily. Oh, I although I, I I do find it hilarious. I mean, I I kind of fall trap to it too. I do remind myself it is fiction. I am not actually watching this human being. I do not know her, but it is kind of hilarious how we all hate or not all. A lot of us hated her for things that, frankly, I would argue all of us would have reacted similarly, if not probably Your worse. Your spouse wants to make and sell meth. meth. Well, <laughs> All right, to be fair, she didn't quite get that part first. So she thought it was an affair. Right. She thought it was a bunch of other things. And from Walter's point of view, he was basically trying to do all this for his family before he turned that really Eisenberg. So, like, the conflict was beautiful. Like, if anything, as much as I couldn't stand her character, the way they wrote it was absolutely masterful, right? Because it's hard to come down on either side and yeah. fault the person because you we could see both sides. They don't get to see it. So it's just hilarious how we're sitting there like mad Skylar for something's like, if you even gave yourself one second and put yourself in her shoes, there's no fucking way in the world you'll walk away and be like, I'll just give him a chance. I was was, was never, I I was never, first of all, I think she's an amazing actor, actress, and exceptionally beautiful. And I met that in Deadwood too. And I'm sorry. I just never thought, I don't know. Maybe I grew up with too many drug dealers, but I was just never mad at her. If anything, I was just like the only part she's doing wrong is actually putting up with his bullshit. This is insane. Your spouse (laughs) is, is making and selling meth <laughs> like no just no, no. it pretty much like, it's like even when she fu- the spoiler alert yeah even when she fucked that other dude i was just like yeah you got a right to that dick that's your girl <laughs> yeah. this and motherfucker the, the is selling meth and they selling and the meth. you know uh yeah. and the i was and i was heated. literally never mad at her not for a second yeah uh, she took that heated. paycheck though yeah, she got the heated floor, the heated bathroom floor. But all mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Turn yeah. Back yeah. I think floor. that's where a lot of people had also problems with her is morality only went so far, even after finding out what her husband was actually doing. So the whole sainthood of Skylar White probably needs to come down yeah. to at least yeah, priesthood. All right. Well, no. Okay, never mind. Oh, we, <laughs> we, di- we diverged. Never mind. We diverged. We, did. we will return to this in March for women's history. That's it. <laughs> Skylar Wade. Is she a saint? Is if she, we haven't pissed off a, enough people. Uh yeah. Is she is she a saint? Is she is she a well a role model for women? Skylar White then next week on the Steam, gentlemen. All right. Well, we have our bingo cards here. We are ready. 
We're going to try and rock this off. This was Rashawn's idea, so we're, we're, we're putting him. He's driving this crazy. Hey, are we doing intros like we normally do? Or Good point. Good point. Yeah, now you're I doing mean, that. To me. Now, you, now you're holding me to it. How, now you're doing that thing. Someone's got to be the showrunner. Absolutely running the show again and doing it just right. You know, He wants, a, he wants a producer here. credit. I do. I know. I, I, think do. I, want, I, I want a point. I think he earned the producer credit today. Me, All right. Well, you know me. I'm the bird man. I'm, uh, you know, I'm off the rails today. I, who knows? I must be, uh, you know, I must be trying some of Walter's meth. Who the hell knows where, where the hell my head's at today? But up late from the Super Bowl, all that good times. I'd like to introduce my good friend, my co-host, the three of clubs himself, Rashawn Smith. What's going on, dude? How you do? What it do? Um, I would like to start with a quote from, a, uh, I mean, a lyric quote from a song. I guess love ain't nothing but emotion and game. It's a lesson well learned, so praise is well due. I'm sending off the big eye and Kenny Calhoun. Um, Mm. That was from It's So Easy, which is from the band De La Soul. I'm I'm getting upset now because I'm not going to lie. Finding out True Goy, the dove, passed away yesterday. Um, I would like to dedicate this to him to De La Soul, to the De La Soul family. I am not kidding. I wept like I lost a family member. Um, It's poignant because we talked about different groups uh, last episode for TSG. And as a young black man, I can honestly say I, people like him are reasons why I'm here. Um, I would not, I don't think I would have had the courage to try to become myself without listening to individuals like him and De La Soul. Um, just the lyrics, how they, they went about it, how they create their songs, how how they just push for individuality, allowed for individuals like me, even before the moments that Greg and I were talking about in our last episode with you know different affinity groups having the courage these days, not even really courage, but being able to represent themselves. That wasn't like that when we were growing up, at least in mass, when we were growing up in the 80s and 90s. So to have a voice like True Goy and De La Soul um, allowed for, uh, like I said, courage from individuals like myself to just try to find my own path. Because uh, the funny thing with stereotypes, a lot of people don't understand is, yes, it's both positive and negative stereotypes that are always negative, but it's also multiple sides that hold on to the stereotypes. And there are plenty of people who aren't black who look at me and say, I have to fit a certain mold. Well, sadly, there are plenty of people who look like me who say I have to fit a certain mold as well. And when you're going up against that, it's a scary, lonely place. And like I say, if it wasn't for groups like De La Soul and for an individual true goy, I, I can sincerely say I would not be here right now today. I'm not trying to make it fatal. I'm sure I'd be alive. I just would not be Rashawn Smith. All right. That is a touching tribute. Feel you. I do know what you're talking about as far as just some, an artist touching your soul and, and make, helping you make who you are and speaking to you, uh, you know, even though I, I assume, you know, even if, if you've never met him, doesn't matter. So rest in power that, uh, you know, that's a beautiful little tribute there. So nice, nice way to start off the show here. Nice way to start off the subject matter. I am going to move it on over to our beloved star child, Gregory Descents. How are we doing today? Oh, feeling all right. You know, uh, energized from the Super Bowl, but then brought down by the news about uh, the loss in De La Soul. But um, uh, I, I can't talk about it because I'm, I'm 100% with Rashawn on that one. Like De La Soul was one of those groups, you know, that if you were the alt black kid, you had to hold on to tightly. <laughs> very tightly <laughs> back in the day so yeah yes. absolutely all right well a true way to start off a sad way to start off but important important to to make note important to take the time yeah guys we are all we are all about uh, about the culture we are all about pop culture here and just as far as like i said that the fact is our last episode we were talking about groups and subgroups and yeah you know i i know those memories they hold tight to you so especially through childhood yeah, Memories and like and like true go- live like people do. <laughs> and like true go and said, peace, peace to all of my Haitians, because uh thankfully my brother, um, Mr. Starchild, Greg Sense, he was one of the first people to post it. And frankly, that's how I found out. I went on uh Super Bowl to see how many Eagle fans were crying 
and being all <laughs> upset and shit like that. I was going on oh, there for yeah. all sorts of mean intentions. First thing I see is my man, my guy, posting about the sad news of Trugo. And, and, and like I said, after that, like you can hear my voice shaking now. It was over. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Ah, well, uh, taken from that, just want to, like I say, welcome everybody again back to the show. And I want, I'm ready to, you know, <laughs> let's lighten things up. Let's, t- let's play some bingo. <laughs> let's play some bingo. Based well, on the one. good bingo. news. Yeah. The good news is here's the funny thing, Greg. I mean, uh, Josh, in a lot of black families uh, across the diaspora, we call funerals the home going and it tends to actually, if you do not know, if you walk into that church or wherever it's being held at the wrong yep. time, you would not know someone got buried uh, other than the weird ass pictures all over the place. Cause it is definitely going to be a party <laughs> It is definitely going to be a little bit of a family reunion. And that's what we're about to do. We're about to kick this shit and together. We're about to send someone to the stove, not no. the store. We're going to send someone to the stove. All right. We're going to get a collection. All right, and then we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna pick a few cousins to make fun of. That's that's how it's gonna be. In that order, ladies and gentlemen. In that order. In that, In that order. order. And we're gonna hide the liquor we're going to get from you know some of them older people in our uh in our family who act like they ain't got liquor in a cup already right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that, I want you to I want you to lead it off. I want you to call out our first square. We've got we've each made it prepared a three by three grid on a card uh, for our bingo cards. So, Rashawn, you're going to call out you're going to call out the first square here. We're going to see if we got any matches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Let's do this. Let's kick this off. I think it's good to also point out to individuals one weird thing about Black history and part of the reason why I wanted to do this. I want to give a little context and reference to why I'm doing this because I think sometimes when I, uh, a Black American, say things like I really can't stand Black History Month, I think it comes off in the wrong way for the wrong years and for the wrong interpretations. Let me be clear. I love my culture. I love my heritage. I love my history. I I was raised and rooted in it, despite the fact that I somehow ended up not marrying within the culture. That's that's something for my my elders to worry about. But the point being is... I absolutely love it. And one of the reasons why I can't stand this month is part of the reason why I can't stand this country sometimes, which is we have something great, but we continue to diminish it by actually not holding it accountable for what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be historical. It is supposed to be historical. It's not supposed to be rote. It's not supposed to be going over the same thing over and over. But here's the problem. And this is the reason why I'm bringing it up. Black History Month in a lot of ways is very analogous to the movie L.A. Confidential. Hold on. Yes. Wait for it. Wait for it. I, 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 knew you, I knew you did this the most, Josh. All right, here you go. Check it out. See, that like confidential, spoiler alert, you have a situation where you have a bunch of careers in law enforcement that got built up off of trumped up or made up charges and crimes. All these individuals built up mega careers, raised their careers, got all sorts of levels off of crimes that either did not uh, exist or made up or they took a small crime and they blew it up and covered it up to the point where they became heroes and then the city had to reward them, all these different things. So how is that like Black History Month? Well, because if we actually are going to be real about Black history, then we're going to have to talk about a lot of people who actually have some historical, monumental gains for this country and for the world. And to do that, you're probably going to have to pull apart histories of individuals who have since built up their careers and their legacies off of trumped up histories or things they didn't in fact do, but they were able to get credit for. And not only are they going to be protecting it, but the entities surrounding it and have also have benefited from those trumped up or made up or bullshit histories are going to forcefully hold on to it as hard as possible. So again, Black History, very much like LA Confidential because that movie came down when someone actually had to solve a crime and led to another crime that actually was made up. And in order to solve the biggest crime, they actually had to unwound and unweave all the bullshit to get back there. So until we're ready to actually look at all of our history and say, hey, maybe this person that we've been celebrating for the last 70 years maybe wasn't as good as we think because there's like four or five black people in their office that got zero credit but did all the work and we can actually find that. 
And we're basically going to get it at best what we're about to do, which is our Black History Bingo. All Welcome. right. All Black right. Black History Bingo. Yo. All right. Black History Bingo. Black you History kinda, You kind of touched on one of, on one of my first squares already. You want, you want me to go next? No, I'll go. I'll go. Okay. That was just, that right. was just the intro. You got it. No, I just didn't All right. Know. All right. All I'm right. starting okay. off with the softball. Ready? Ready. Ready. All right. All right. And block one. Or what are we gonna call it? A one, yeah. Whatever. A one, A one, A one, two, three, B one. So we'll two, go A. We'll, what do we yeah. want A go A be the row and and one be the and numbers be the columns. Columns, yeah, makes sense. All right, A one. I have color schemes automatically changing to uh, only red, green, or black. So yeah, you have entities that have no business. No business whatsoever changing their color scheme. Nothing's going to change. Nothing ever is going to. There's no message to be conveyed. There's no no inspiration, no nothing. They just show up and February yeah. 1st with red, black, and green all over their fucking color scheme. And and best part is they don't even make it to the march. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> like, the 18th. And then take that shit down. So the first Ooh. one. So my A1 is going to be color schemes immediately change into red, green, and black. It's like the Starbucks, right? Like all of a sudden the car, the, the coffee cup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. right? You dress yep. the coffee cup in a dashiki. Well done. Like, okay. Like, <laughs> that's, that's a fucking slick. It's not that. Crushed it. At least go the whole month, cheap bastard. Uh, you know, I know. No kidding. No, no, it's February twenty seventh. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. We got to move. There's on. some Februarys that go twenty five days, right? Right. Right. Yes. You know, it's February. Absolutely. Uh, it's March right. negative three. All right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I I I'm gonna give a slight preface on my card that I wrote this as you know being the white guy of the group. I did also want to write this as a chance to educate uh you know the white people in the group uh, these are th also things that like I put on there that i think white people are often going to say either in general or specifically during black history month and please don't um, <laughs> maybe i have i might be guilty of this so just before everyone is feeling defensive like white people i feel you i'm with you uh we've all made the mistakes so just you know, learn and grow better, right? That's what this is all about. That's what we're trying to. So my A1, talking about uh, talking about it, bringing up an important uh, subject matter that has that has come out. There's actually been acts and, and laws now enacted in, in Congress, the, uh, the, the Crown Act, to help with this. Can I touch your hair? Okay. Ooh, that's a good <laughs> no one. White, no white people, you can't. <laughs> mm -mm. Don't, don't ask how you got the Afro. Don't ask how, right? Don't ask how you got the dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's that type of thing. If you really want to, you're gonna hear this as a recurring theme on my list a lot. Google, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm stealing this from Rashawn. Google is for everybody, people. Like, if you're really that curious, that's cool. If you really want to learn, Google that's it. It's all right. Google it. It's okay. Google you it. Right. You don't have to, you know, go around and suddenly show how or. Or as well, on the flip side of this, you don't have to run up and tell your black friend the, the nature of their hair because you Googled it. That's oh, you, oh, one also, block at a time. One block at a time. I, I, yeah, I kind of, all right, I kind of, those I got to combine. I can, you know me, you know me. I get over exuberant. I get excited. It's really, that's just all the same in the, in there. But uh, yeah. All right. So that's my A1 block there. By the way, our uh -huh. hair is like that because when Adam met Eve, they were under intense sun in the sub-Saharan uh, continent of Africa. So, yeah, that, that, that's what it was. <laughs> that's that's what it was. Wait, what are you talking about? Come on. They were from different neighborhoods. That's that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You're from South Bedrock? I never met you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> South Bedrock. <laughs> Haven't been there for a while. All right, Greg, what you got? Um, this one might be a touch controversial, but I'm gonna be um I'll be that guy this time around. Start, um, child. Please stop race swapping characters. Ooh. There I said it. Ooh. Please stop, please stop. Ooh. Ooh, please like stop that. it. It comes off as pandering and it's unbelievably creatively lazy. It's at best just creative masturbation. Like it's just 
it's just oh. bad. Oh, it's just bad. bad. And, and I'm totally over it. And, and okay, it's it's tough for me, especially because I do get, you know, that twinge of glee when I just think about how miserable it's going to make every fucking right winger. So it makes me want to make every character. <laughs> Some left wingers too. Of Western Some left wingers too. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, you know, like it, it, it just makes me want to just, you know, turn every, you know, fictional character and some of the nonfiction characters in all of Western <laughs> literature black. You know what I mean? I am. Yeah, go, go ahead. Make that, you know, George Washington black. Knock yourself up. But it, it is getting boring and it is lazy. And I want I'm I understand that a lot of people they do a lot of people of color they do appreciate the fact that the effort's being made and now that they can see one themselves in this work of fiction it's like but they could do so much better and they True. could reflect you so much better and mm -hmm. they could honestly do something where not only do you feel included you feel elevated you don't feel like you're just writing someone else's coattails or you know cape so that I, I'd kind of like to see that stop. I think that would be the height of respect, you know, instead of just saying, make them black, sit down, do the research, do the work, take the risk and give people real characters that will reflect um, their experience and give them, you know, something to uh, uh, aspire to. It, it is more work and you take more of a chance because obviously everybody loves name recognition. It's the shit. But for people uh, of color who've been waiting for this and who were already doing it before, but, you know, that got co-opted or fucked up in one way or another, I think this, uh, this shows real respect. This is you taking the time to make that meal from the beginning, not just microwaving some bullshit. You know, I, I, oh, I just want to say there go my Hamilton tickets I had for you, Greg. Thanks a lot. Really. really I actually you know. can't stop. And I did not like Hamilton. <laughs> I, 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 I know from what you just said. Now I'm feeling yeah, all I did there. not you know? like how you looked over your shoulder like the Hamilton. art guys when I get you. Because <laughs> I, I didn't like Hamilton. It was the, I mean, ex aside from the race swapping in the hip hop, it was the most whitewashed version of american history you've ever heard. <laughs> like of course mike pence went to see this shit other than the the, the groovy hip-hop you know the hippity hop music do you yeah, think mike pence listens to uh, hamilton when he wants about to do you think he listens to hamilton when he wants to listen to like when he has his rap phase like when he's oh, traveling absolutely. in the car it's like he wants to go hardcore it's like give me track absolutely. four hamilton it's like oh, yeah, i'm about yeah. to work out I'm going to take uh, my shot. You know, I, I, I'm I, think you and I, Greg, are a lot closer on this than you sometimes like to admit because uh, you just admitted that, you know, you feel similar to uh, the rest of us, which is that little hint of glee. And frankly, I agree with you in a lot of ways how it can sometimes just be not only worse than not having the person there, but even turn somehow even into more insulting of a situation where it, the person is only there to prop up the white character. And to me, it's a lot of ways it is. See, Hollywood ain't slick on anything they do. It's just the fact that we get bored and we're just going to pay for it. To me, it's nothing more than the, the, uh, the, the maturation of back in the eighties and probably seventies uh, too. You guys ever yeah. notice that? You guys ever notice that in order to show the main white character being able to fight, they always toss in some random Asian guy. Like yeah. they always, yeah. it was not like actually the same guy. Like it was the same guy who had the long uh, hair. He was bald and in the mustache. He was like in almost every other movie. But in order, like you would see this white character, the main character, be a bunch of people out no one would be like, hey, I guess he can fight. Then they toss in the Asian guy who will do like a few different martial art moves, not even connect, just like literally just show it. Then a white guy kicks his ass and we're all like, oh, that dude could fight. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly what it, it tends to happen more often than not when they do race swapping. I'm with you on that. We just talked about the Maverick. How they yeah. make sure that the two it's making it into the, the final mission were uh, non-white, but at the same time, they're really only in there to just be like, oh, it's too hot. I got it. I'm not going to do the crazy shit. And then here comes fucking 72-year-old Tom Cruise who's just 
frankly, I think he's trying to escape Scientology by death through a movie. Um, <laughs> but here he comes. And, you know, everyone's like, yeah, that's totally believable. Tom Cruise and fucking Goose's kid uh, were able to pull this off. Yeah, why not? Of course. All right. Against you got en- enemy of Stan. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I forget enemy is Stan. All right, we got that's a whole a episode place. of that, by the way. Call back. If you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to our Maverick episode. Got nothing but callbacks for we you. Got, we, got deep, we got deep into that stuff. All right, Rashawn, what's your All next right. one? All right, I'm going to go down my column, so B1. Got and you. for B1, I'm going to go with during this month, uh, the non-black person all of a coming, all of a sudden coming up with newfound favorites in any uh, area, you can name it. So you know, we just talked about Super Bowl, it's football. You know, it's that random dude who sits down next to you, and all of a sudden, it's like, you know, did I ever tell you that my favorite quarterback was Don McNabb? It's like, Carl, you fucking hate the Eagles, and I swear <laughs> to God, you said nothing but the racist shit about every single quarterback they've had Aww. since. <laughs> well no no but i really love that don mcnab's like I, nope Did you no know? no we're not doing that <laughs> no no <laughs> you know never, you know i love larry bird name. but ml Carr really was the person that ran that team you know just, <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to do this man you don't just, just it's cool Tony i love larry Dungy. bird too it's all right it's cool. Tony yeah. Dungy it's is okay. a great coach still is and a good comment i really like his commentating yeah, just, on, yeah. on nbc it's it's fantastic come on yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe not you a great know, time, you know who was my favorite actor growing up roy vereen no 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 it wasn't no it was not no it goddamn wasn't you're a liar <laughs> son of a bitch carl all right fuck out of here every time oh yeah so yeah right. newfound favorites all of a sudden, being discovered during my favorite. I like February first, uh, February twenty uh, uh, twenty twenty issues issues twenty maybe 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 high teens nineteen twenty maybe issues nineteen or yeah or to the to the pre March month uh pre March week yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right I'm gonna stay in the A's I'm gonna go to A two so we're going I'm going across the top here A two uh, I've got MLK said, I have a dream. Ooh. Okay. All right. There we go. Always that. I, I do Dude. have an MLK reference. All right. Okay. So we got mm-hmm. bingo. Right. So, okay. We can have a potential. We can have a potential for bingo here. But yes, again, people, that's that's great. I do understand American education. I, I'm a product of it myself, but like to push myself a little bit harder in some things. And yeah, I do also understand that in uh, most of our grade schools, they introduced us to to dr martin luther the king and didn't tell us a whole lot more than yeah they didn't really get into the meat of the subject shall you we? punch so, me in the chest you know exactly <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. you did not. no you did no, not you did not mean this the king. uh the fact is that yeah he said a lot of things people try actually looking up a few more of his quotes okay. yeah there's a couple that got put okay around george floyd a couple of years ago a couple more got put up on the lawn yeah. good work you were getting there but don't be afraid to get to some of the other quotes like the quotes that might scare you like maybe the ones he said about white liberals and progressive or at white the white liberal being the enemy to the movement and how they would always put things off forever and ever or my personal favorite it's insulting to tell a man to pull himself up by his bootstraps when he has no boots really always like that one but you know somehow in certain circles that's just going to make people feel uncomfortable so yeah mm-hmm. if we're going to talk martin luther king might as well talk about all of it might as well talk about a little bit more and show that maybe you've read more than one law and sign that's all i'm saying white people just you know try try a little harder do the work do the Google. A little hard. See you again. Do the work. Exactly. Especially the part, you know, um, uh, uh, they'd love to say, you know, uh, if Dr. King were alive now, he would be so ashamed. It's like, if Dr. King were alive now, you would fucking hate his ass. <laughs> you would hate his ass. That you would Dr. Hate Dr. That. King, Dr. King is kind of like, you know, every dead Indian chief. You only <laughs> like him because he's dead. dead. If he was alive, you would fucking <laughs> hate Martin Luther King's anti-war, anti-establishment. <laughs> yes. No, you, you'd, you'd fucking hate Dr. King if he was alive. 
Yeah. Well, those same people hate Al Sharpton, and Al Sharpton was a very close confidant of Dr. Reverend Martin or Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yep. Um, they weren't like obviously the same people. They had very different views on a lot more than people think. But at the same time, they were also pretty close. So it was hilarious to uh, our points that same people who would kill Reverend Sharp Sharpton if they if it were legal have no problem showing up and talking about MLK. Yeah. Right. Like, really. If you were alive today, it's like, uh, if it, he, yeah, if you were alive he, today, he'd be exactly. probably with Reverend Al Sharpton, the person yeah. you want. You, you, think, you think Tucker Carlson would have uh, Dr. King on? No, that's not going to happen. I don't think so. Not so yeah, much. No, not nor, nor, and also the people who go so, you know, uh, so uh, out of their minds at the very word matter, as in to have meaning, to have value, right? Every group that just says, we're alive, we're here, we matter. Uh, and would have to turn into all have to lives tell you. matter, right? Like, no, 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 you can't have that moment there. Uh, yeah. You know, that, yeah, exactly. Uh, same, same one. Martin Luther King would be ashamed today. That's a, that's a good one. I'd probably change. I probably change my quote to that. Uh, you know, uh, I, I gotta agree with you on that one, Greg. That, that was. That's, that's Martin, dead on that. that's if Dr. Dead on King that. was alive and he saw all of these low riders and sagging <laughs> pants, he would be like, "What's up with all these white people?" Right. <laughs> I don't know that the Houston, the Houston low rider parade that they do for MLK Day is pretty dope. I'm sorry. That shit is hot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the people I see busting a sag more than any group of individuals to date. And this has been going on for about two decades it is older white dudes, especially if they're overweight. Those those fans <laughs> are so far <laughs> below the ass. And like, and the best part is when you see him wearing a belt. Like, I don't even understand why you went with that. Like, I right, you're the sag man, but I don't even understand what you're doing with that belt like, around your <laughs> hips. <laughs> We're white well, exactly. Are, are Cling, you clinging desperately to your hips? Are you scared you about to spank someone? You ain't got n- nothing to work with. I mean, there's there's bushes right. all around this bitch. Let me let me show you. Let me show you how I work the switch. Oh, getting the switch. Oh, Greg, what you got? What's your next square? Um, c- which one are we going to? Say again. You it's up can to you. Go, it's up to you. Oh, all right. I thought we were just doing a square for for the squares. Um, I got a second one. Um, uh, this one's kind of a two parter. I'm calling it Black Porn Matters slash Bring Back Black Love. All right. That's right. You know what I mean? Because being able to express yourself and how you love and who you love and what it is that, you know, what your people have a history and a tradition of loving and what you do um, it is an important part of self-expression. You know what I mean? If you're told that, you know, first of all, breeding is bad. And then you're also told that, you know, the slow uh, down thought else. Who was up? Said, Slow down, Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're also told that uh, you know you're unattractive, and anything about you is unattractive, and everything that you want and desire is grotesque. It's disgusting because just because you want it. Looking at you, watermelon argument. It's not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. It's just the fact that you want it, and mm-hmm. we have to make sure that we demean and degrade you in every way possible. And I say no to that. I say very much no to that. I think black people, because I got into this dispute because of the show that I saw that was um, uh, dedicated to Marvin Gaye and no one did black love. No one did two glistening, gorgeous brown bodies just pressed up against each other all over their bodies. You know, like there was none of that. You know, and again, being able to uh, express yourself openly and sexually is an important part of all of us. You know, I mean, I know uh, uh, the pearl clutching is going to begin, you know, because no one has ever had an impure thought uh, in this day and age. One does wonder where the children come from. But I think that how people (laughs) how people uh, express themselves emotionally and sexually um, is a part of them and their identity. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all about interracial couples. They're fine. 
you know, like they happen. Like I, I have no problem with it, but I also, you also want to make sure that you are uplifting all options and bringing beauty to the entire spectrum. And I'm not seeing enough of that. And the reason I threw in the black porn is because I, again, I know no one would ever entertain the idea of watching something so base as pornography, but to again explore and explore yourself Just sexually and explore and uh, uh express yourself sexually openly you know another place people do do that is with pornography and i think that where pornography is taking black love is very important and i think it's honestly worth looking at and i'm happy to see it i'm happy to see it because for a long time uh, it was not getting the respect that it deserved and it should be right up there with whatever blonde or aging white man because you know when you're a white dude you can be like 70 years old and be the sexiest man alive all of that absolutely matters so i think that needs to come to the forefront for black history month to be fair his name is george and his last name is clooney and he's only in his 60s <laughs> yeah but i was going i i, I oh, was going with hugh he's in his 60s <laughs> i was going with hugh and jackman but you know all right we get all we can see where, where rashawn's taste lies and my, my taste lies it's all good you kidding me george clooney fuck yeah oh yeah no I, I was not mocking you i assure you i get that I, i'm the, I, I get it i understand <laughs> you know i defy i, I defy to my anyone. wife yeah still george clooney i defy uh, anyone to watch dusk from dusk till dawn and not walk away thinking that is one cool ass motherfucker i mean i i defy you without a doubt he's the he here comes great yeah that was me yeah, that, that, that movie's like 30 years old but all right all right <laughs> he was younger then uh all right michelle what you got for your next square all right let's see here what i i'm going down my a's all right easy now no they're children oh, listening yeah c1 all right so okay. i did b1 so c1 all right so dumb gestures no one asked for here's an example no one, and I guarantee you, no fucking one asked for a squad car to be remade in, once again, red, green, and black colors, <laughs> adorned with other African iconogra- iconogra- icon- icons. Iconography. Thank Iconography. There I don't know why I can't say that word, other than the fact that I got a jumble mouth. So anyway, so yeah, uh, that's something you can definitely count on um, in Black history is gestures that no one fucking asked for, like, an example, a police squad car being re- repainted in red, green, and black. And as I stumbled over the word, African icon, icon- iconography. Iconography. There you go. You want killing it. it. Yeah, yeah, killing it. No, I'm only 42. But anyway. Well, you know, it was, I, I mean, there you go. So, so we can, you know, make everybody happy here. Yeah. You know, Nancy putting on a dashiki and taking a knee. That, that was sweet. Really? <laughs> Don't do that. You know, come on. Like, that was completely. Yeah. No one asked you to, Nancy. It's okay. No, come no on. one asked you to. No, no yeah. one. Asked. Same with you, Chuck. I'm not, I'm going to call you out too. Right. Jew to Jew. Just no, no, stop it. No, Chuck, Chuck, stand up, stand up, get out of your dashiki. Stop it. Well, like um, I said, I do remember. I mean, the, the squad car happened this year. So that's why I was focusing on that. I think it was in Florida, of course. Um, you know, we, we, you brought up the word matter. Well, during the summer of the matter protests, so to speak, I remember companies like Bed Bath and Beyond sending out, um, uh, emails talking about how they stand with a race, I mean, aside and, and equality and all that. It's like, okay, but who the fuck, who, who's, what are we doing with this email? What exactly was his email supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to walk out <laughs> to the public and hold his email out? We're good here. We're good. we're good here, Bad Bath and Beyond, and oh, oh shit, Panera too. All right, yeah, we're okay, yeah, all set. Yeah. We are good for a couple of years now. Did you guys get? The, did you get the email? Did you get, yeah. the, did you get the memo? Please right. don't break our window. Yeah, you get, yeah, right, exactly. Please, no, we're okay. We're okay. We're all, we're all good here. We're one of the good ones. We're all, but we're all the same. All right, we're good. We're good. Okay, we're good. Going on. Orange whip. Orange whip. Three orange whips. Okay. Okay. All right. Check. 
we'll wait for oh. Mercedes, but we're, we're, I think we're good here. <laughs> waiting on Mercedes. Yeah. Whoo, that's a little complicated there. You definitely don't wait on Volkswagen, but that's another mm-hmm. thing. All right. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right in the middle square. So that's B2. All right. I'm gonna go for that. And and this is the one you touched on a little bit, Rashawn, um, in your intro. And this is the Morgan Freeman 60 Minutes interview, which in which he says, I don't want a Black History Month and much of what you talked about. And I want to preface this. I really like Morgan Freeman. I think he's a fantastic actor. And I also respect his opinion on this matter. I truly do. I, you know, he makes some good points in that, that it should be history and it should be taught. Um, with that, though, as a white dude, I, I don't want to hear other white people bringing that up as a reason that we shouldn't have Black History Month. Like, <laughs> no, that's not what he's talking about. Nope. Now, as Rashawn has has very aptly pointed out, people are not monoliths. So all Black people are not monoliths. Some people are not appreciative. And, and as Rashawn indicated, there's some frustration with Black History Month. I respect that. He has an opinion on that totally respectable want to hear that opinion gonna take that in gonna listen to that opinion you can listen to that opinion and you can listen to an opinion people without having one of your own or speaking to it (laughs) so that's my biggest thing when i say you know someone going to the morgan freeman interview it's like okay you know very very you know very strong actor very intelligent guy really do like what he has to say on it i will also say That when you have a particular state, looking at you, Florida, that just seems really uncomfortable with the entire subject of Black history, not even a month, mind you, but the actual Mm. subject itself is now under scrutiny. Well, it it only brings a little more import to that interview, right? Because if we're going to talk about history and talk about it as a subject, maybe we need a month, maybe we need all 12 months of the year. But I will tell you one thing trying to pretend it doesn't exist and trying to say we can't talk about it is not going to help anything. I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and do a hot take on that one. Right. right there. Hot, take. <laughs> hot take. Oh boy. You know, oh, I'm, a straight white, I'm a straight white guy talking about black history. So everybody, listen we may, up have, we may have hit bingo. That's it. You know, right. Buckle up. <clears throat> okay. The, the Morgan Freeman, yeah, Morgan Freeman, 60 minutes interview. That so, so our listeners understand again, I love my month. I love it. I love it more than I can explain what I, I'm not going to speak for Morgan Freeman. I think it's clear. He can speak for himself. I just want to make it clear for all our listeners. I'm not saying I don't want the month. Actually, I I appreciate it and because of it, a lot of things have come from it. What I don't want is the month to become so routine that we fall into a situation like we're talking about where one state who is leading the way and making sure you do not know any of the information that would be covered in the history of the month is also showing up talking about let's celebrate this month. Um, A good example is my aunt, many of my family, like a lot of people, um, who are my age had family who were in part of the civil rights uh, movement. Well, my aunts and my great aunts fall to that. And my aunt sent me this article about David Rice Hegley Jr. Do you know who that is? I didn't know who that is. And we'll probably never get to hear about this person. But this man's literally nicknamed the father of 3D graphics. I love video games. You would think that would be something that we would hear about every or somewhere around, or somewhere around February. But no, we don't ever hear about that because chances are if you're going to have to hear about David Rice Hegley Jr., you're probably going to have to hear about all the people who fucking capped down his progress and his, uh, his work and all the reasons why he was the reason why we end up probably playing some of the things that we do now. Yeah, that's right. That's Black I, I History. Don't, I, don't, I don't mind that. Uh, I, I agree with Josh. I don't mind that Morgan Freeman has that opinion. I think it's perfectly fine. I think it's absurd and idealistic. Um, but he is entitled to that opinion completely. You know, uh, when people say things like that, I'm like, okay, but you do know the country you live in. Mm -hmm. Does it seem like that is right around the corner? Does it seem that, does it like, really, does it, 
Like, that's a, who's just, I mean, all right, fine. You know, fucking acid reflux shouldn't exist, but shit, we know that these things are just realities and they have to exist. When someday, you know, the United States has gone through the completely dynamic shift it needs to go to in order to have all of the information about all of the people that helped build this country in their history books where they should be. Okay. Yeah. I totally see possibly getting rid of black history month, but I just don't see that happening in our lifetime or yours morgue, but it's good to hold on to ideals. I really hope ours is a little bit longer. His, I mean, yeah. I love the guy, but it ain't going to happen. Just for a race, you know, someone's a little bit closer. That's all. It, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Yeah, all right, Greg, what's your what's your next square? Uh, well, well, which one did you? I'm just, we're just picking squares, right? We're just picking squares. Yeah, oh, going yeah. through. Okay. Um. Then I guess my square is, uh, one. F- oh no, a shit. 1A? No. 1 1C. Mine one is C. one. Right. one mine C. is now 1C is what it is. Um one thing cuz it it does, you know, you have to bring up a lot of the humanism in the civil rights movement to get to this point, but I think that that's another thing that has to get brought into this conversation, the humanism of it. You know, the fact that uh, if you had just uh, uh, included, you know, black Americans, uh, you know, they would be probably hating immigrants right there with you. Most of them still do already. Um, Black Americans have long and always wanted to be part of the American conversation. They don't see themselves as outside of America. European Americans do. And it's that perspective that has to be at the forefront of it. I feel like it doesn't the feeling of being cheated. You know, the feeling of being mistrusted, the feeling of being just, you know, ignored again, touching back on, you know, the struggle, (laughs) like just absolutely no effort made to understand my perspective in the exact same country. I thought it was funny. I think I've said this uh, on here before, but, you know, I thought it was funny when people would come and ask me things about uh, black Americans like you're white American. My family's from the Caribbean. I don't fucking know. Like these people, are, <laughs> these people are your countrymen. Why don't you know? <laughs> You're the one. Why, why are you asking me about what soul food is? Like I'm from Haiti. We just have food. All right. Like it's just food. Like why are you asking me? Like these are your countrymen. You've lived with each other for since the beginning of the country. So why are you? Why do you feel like you have to have this conversation with me? So I think getting into that part, the emotions, you know what I mean? Getting part to feeling unwelcome in your own country to your aesthetic being ignored in your own country and not just because everybody goes straight to the rage, you know, like it's not all rage. It's genuinely dismay it's genuinely sadness and it's sadness for the future of the country because if this cancer is still alive and well in your average american uh, european american today then you can't ever get to where you want to go you you just won't you you just can never get to where you want to go like you're handicapping yourself Mm -hmm. and that is also that also makes African Americans proud. I mean, sad because they want they are proud of their country, and they do want it to go forward. But they know mm-hmm. as long as this mentality exists, it never will. So I think the spectrum of emotion in the race conversation, I'd like to see more of that in Black History Month. All right, Rashawn, let's let's take it back up to you. What uh, what's your next what's your next square to go with here? All right, so I will allow the panel to say if this should be an individual square or not because we sort of touched on this earlier, but I'm going to be a little bit more specific and frankly a little bit more with my heat. So the square I'm going with for my um, a two, my A two square would be uh, B or sorry, Black History Month hot takes. And what I mean by that is when people go after iconic figures for no damn reason or try to like just be a contrarian. You know, someone like all of a sudden out of nowhere, someone just lean in, and be like you know, Harriet Tubman really was a shit. You know, it's like, uh, uh, is this the time to be talking about this? Is this you know, 
I heard she did this and just talking all sorts of shit and, and all sorts of hot takes. Like this is not the time right now. Like literally we have 27 to 28 days every single year, sometimes even less. You do the math and you're showing up right now. Wanted to talk about Harry. I hear shit from you all through January. I don't hear shit from you from March on, but come February, here you come showing up. Want to be talking about, you know, I heard Frederick Douglass uh, actually didn't even like black women. It's like, what? No, man. <laughs> Talk about that uh, shit. Uh, Fuck out of uh, here. Uh, 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 uh. Martin so, yeah, King, Black yeah, History Mike. Month hot takes. And, and sadly, it comes from all over because there'd be just as many people who want to make a name for themselves showing up. We went through this a couple of like a decade ago. Someone who I actually uh, love and respect, but he had a book and he did his research. So I'll give him that. Um, right. But this uh, author, researcher, and and uh, he's actually um, uh, which we call it. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even oh, think. The hot takes that, that was good. Up. That was good. I, I love the hot take, and I love that, and I even love the Batman landing. The you know, <laughs> that's exactly what I was. That a bit was. Of the Batman hitting. That uh, I, I was I was good until I saw that bridge. I'm like, now's the time to pull the rip cord. Oh shit! Oh. Activist. <laughs> Sorry. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let people read through the lines uh, of that awesome landing that I totally stuck and landed. But uh, yeah, oh, this activist. Okay, who, totally so he, he researched, he, he knew what he was talking about, but it was one of those like, did you have to do it? And did you have to do it this way? Because he went after MLK. He, he unearthed some things that were frankly factual. Some yeah. were just, just fly out, you know, absolutely factual. But it was like, Come on, man. Like we got enough things going on. Like, like, uh, like Greg was just saying, we're up against it already. We're trying to get to the point of people understanding our history is American history. And here you go crashing the one icon that we know we can land on every single year. Like, come on, man. This, this ain't the time. And motherfucker, yeah. motherfucker, go, go do it to Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. If you, because yeah. that kind of argument, I just call that Twitter fighting when people just feel like they got to pull yeah. some bullshit factoid out of their ass and they yeah. just like strut around like a fat pigeon. It's like, no, yeah. no, no, no. You do that. When I see you do that shit to Robert E. Lee, then I will be that much more impressed. But your first target is the pacifist doctor. Doctor, Shut, shut the fuck doctor. up. Thank you. Shut uh, the fuck up. Get out of here. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Uh, the, the, the I, preacher you is your first target. Shut up. Yeah, right. <laughs> you call it you call it Twitter fighting, and that's a very accurate uh, description. I call it the Ben Shapiro aha moment. Man, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King. Have you, if you really right, think exactly. it's history, yeah, it's kind of disturbing. Uh, so yes, I'm with that. How'd you like my Ben Shapiro there, Rashad? That was very good. I, I, I do my best uh I, I'm not even gonna say what I was gonna say for the sake of all of us, but uh yeah. I think I nailed Ben Shapiro. Come on. You know, it says I actually sound I feel all right, this is gonna get me in trouble, but if you speed up our podcast to one point <laughs> seven five or even two, I sound like Ben Shapiro. So. I think that's awesome. It's well, like we a all thing. sound like Ben Shapiro. It's like the hidden it, it, it's like the hidden thing with you know, it's like the, it's like the satanic messages, the back I fucking wish on the, be old, on the old albums, right? When you played them backwards, they were like I'd I much rather be calling out secretly the Lucifer than sound like fucking Ben Chappelle. <laughs> There's so many other things I'd rather have happen. But there you go. That's our secret fact. If you if you line our show up with the second roar from the MGM Lion and, and play Wizard of Oz, oh my God. Go. I blame uh, learning how to talk in Southern California, where everything I say and do has a weird sort of draw to it that is Southern. It. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Also, uh, lazy mouth. That's I'm what my mom would say. There you go. All right. I, I will. I, I think I'll touch on something here. Uh, this is my A2. My mm -hmm. A2 square. Uh, and it, it's touching on things that I think Greg talked about a little bit. I, I, both of you have talked about. So uh, phone a black friend. Okay. Oh, uh, you got me. <laughs> all right. This is that this is that week. This is that month where all of a sudden you got to. You got to phone your black friend. You got to ask him about the struggle. You got to ask about the history. You got to ask about, you know. Because your black friend has nothing else to do. Clearly, they don't have a job. They don't have a family. Literally. They really just actually are sitting around waiting with bated breath 
for your call and this is this is their moment right this is this is they get to suit up like batman and explain you know several hundred years of history and oppression and you know really just break it all down just break it all down for you so yeah like why do you know why do black people always da, 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 da. you can put the the it's it's like a mad lib okay you can put anything <laughs> at the end of that sentence <laughs> all that give me an adjective give me a noun uh, give me an adverb right but just start off with why do black people and then you can have have to or something along those lines or why do they that's always one of my favorites why do they but mm -hmm. yes, so the phone of Black Red. Hey, you know, I got a, I got a question for you, Greg. Can you settle an argument for me? <laughs> me Actually, up. yes. Yeah, there, there yeah. you go. <laughs> I heard you know from you're, more you're the people. one that needs to call me. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I heard from <laughs> more people during the protest, and I, I did. Sadly, even when like my parents passed away, I, I had people oh checking in and out of nowhere, just like, I'm hey. Serious, uh, yeah. You Are know you some okay? trash ass white people. Seriously, you know, that's fucked up. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. These times are kind of hard for you right now. You know, I just, I just, I just can't imagine. Can we, can we talk? Like now, you want to talk? Uh, is, okay, sure. <laughs> why? That's, that's some shit is fucked up. That's like, uh, damn. You know some garbage white people. <laughs> uh, don't act like you don't. God damn, that's some uh, garbage yeah, and, white and people. On, on the other side of that. At, you don't act like you don't let, let me yeah. let me go ahead and say you you know I hope i you, honestly i hope i don't i you honestly do. can't think of, i'm going you, through the rolodex you do <laughs> like, let I me can't. let me let me explain to you you do i'm going through but my also, contacts to, to josh's point another thing that i need all our listeners to hear and and spread the word tell a friend tell a friend to josh's point the other thing is if we're at a party that's not the time for us to talk about it like okay. I Absolutely. could be here wanting to have a good fucking time. Who who would have thought at a party I want to be here having a good time, not going through the sorrows of my heritage and my culture <laughs> and some of the triggering moments that I have Word. to go through on a day-to-day, right. -day, right. moment to moment basis, or things that like were absolutely horrific for my family. Like, <laughs> I have these uh, a group of friends that up until this moment I was really close with. We were on a party. It was a, just a, like a guy's night type thing. We're all hanging out. It's like at this point, we had been drinking for a good six or seven hours. It's like 2 a.m. I mean, is that that weird moment, you know, when like you have the one of those like guys moment where you're still kind of like kicking it, but everyone's just so tired. All you're doing is just listening to music. Well, that's what we're doing. We're just kicking it, chilling and listening to music. And they flipped it to freaking early 90s hip hop. Now, immediately in my head, I'm like, all right, this is only a matter of time. Uh -huh. And hopefully because I'm with my boys. I thought these were my boys. I think I'm good. Some of the ladies oh, come shit. up. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening, right? Because I'm, I'm trying to pay attention. Who's going to slip? Who's really my boys? Because as I explained to them, <laughs> when, when, when you're my age, and Greg may know what I'm talking about, you have to basically justify anyone who's not black to the elders in your family. And <laughs> what they would always say back to you is, you know they're going to slip. Like, it don't even matter. You know they're going to slip. And when they slip, you become exactly what you know they're going to slip on saying. And be like, nah, you know, so-and-so ain't going to be like that. And, and you, you're talking to people who grew up during the civil rights moment and from parents who were in slavery or worse. Yes, I said worse. So point being, is like, you're sitting, I'm sitting there. It's waiting for the moment. No one slips. And then finally, one asshole looks at me. He's like, no one well, slips. Why can't why can't I say it? You know, like I was gonna say, you but why can't I say it? You got one of my cut. You did it. You got one of my. You got it. You got the exact there you go. spot. You got one of my bingo did cards. It. You got now, it right I, there. I'm gonna save us all from how how long this conversation went and give you a short version, which is why the fuck do you think I want to have this conversation <laughs> right now at two thirty a.m. after drinking for like six straight hours and having a good time? Why do you think I want to end my night? By talking about the N-word with a bunch of people that should never even fucking think of like what? Why is that in your thought process that you think that is something I want? Well, maybe I just want to fucking get drunk and have a good time with the rest of us. Like, uh, why the fuck? Why do I have to have the somber moment? All right. We're going to move it on to Greg, but I just wanted to say that's A3. You got it for me. Like, A3. literally, as yeah. I wrote it, why can't I say it? That was it right there. I had it. <laughs> Sorry, I still have to explain that to some white people, but no. Me too. Uh, you know, that is that is the case. But uh, literally, as I wrote it, there we go. All right, now I'm feeling 
I'm feeling in the groove of of, uh, of Black History Bingo. Greg, last square for for this episode. What what do we got? I'm a, I'm gonna do my A three. Okay. I'm gonna do my A three because I mean I I come from this emotionally from a lot of places, but you know so I I, I say it in two ways. Like one, you know stop you know, stop falling into the trap of, you know, people telling you what you should be ashamed of when you're black. Also that, you know, two thirds of black people need to stop hating on a third of black people. Also that, you know, you can't keep dredging up, you know, these economic uh, uh, injustices and social injustices and then look, you know, and then hate the people that it affects the most. And I called this one, I like my stereotype. Stop apologizing for being black as fuck. Yeah, I mean, stop. Don't apologize. Don't ever apologize. People are like, oh, God, it's one of those black people. Fuck. Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, it is. And you be loud and you be bright and you be fabulous and you live. You rock your style and you do what you want to do and you live how you want to live. And if other people don't like it, fuck them. Because so right, you know what I mean. All this pull your pants oh, yeah. up bullshit, and you know people not liking any oh, particular like style if they want to wear. Not even black people too. You know I hear that. No, but, I'm just saying. Yeah, I know I hear it way too much from way too many people. It's like no man. You know white people don't have to apologize for being their kind of ratchet white. Nope. You know what I mean like no one else has to. As you know, like black. that's your style. That's your class. That's your region. That's your religion. That's how you want. That's like. That's what you like, then live it, then be it. You know what I mean? Like being just, you know, some uh, uh, Afrocentric black girl in the Bronx. Okay, that's fine. You know, I'm sure that you're the approachable African-American and it can't always be easy. But you know what? If somebody else wants to have their rims, they want to have their brims, they want to have their low rider, they want to have, yo, they want to flaunt their style and they're loud about it, more power to them more power to them. They are in absolutely no need to explain themselves to you. And you are in absolutely no position to judge them. So I call that one. I like my stereotype. I love it. I yeah. love it. Don't apologize for, for being you ever. Hell and you touched yeah. on, you touched on the crown act, you know? Uh, so yeah. yeah, all of that falls into that category. Watermelon's good. Fried chicken's good. <laughs> Wait, that Fried wasn't salt. the line, right? That wasn't. No, the- no, no. <laughs> Big bacon's but, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout, good. shout out to uh, Travolta. Yeah. Right? You did not say that across from Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you did not. Good. You did so not. good. <laughs> Sewer rat made taste like uh, pumpkin pie, pumpkin but I don't pie, know, I ain't eat the motherfucker. Yeah. Filthy <laughs> motherfucker. That's one of the best. Well, all right. We knew this one could go a little long, so we planned to make it a two-parter, folks. So that's uh, that's how we're going to go today. We are. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us. We are loving this. I'm loving this little experiment. So this has been a blast. I'm just having such a great time. Uh, but... Let's check in on what we got planned for the rest of the week and how we're gonna how we're gonna keep ourselves how we're gonna keep ourselves well and healthy through the rest of this beautiful Black History Month. Rashawn, what you got going on for your clubs? Uh, like normal, try to make it to another payday. And despite what some people think, and Mr. D. Williams, I will not be enjoying the magnificent Colt 45s anytime soon. Um, or frankly, King Cobra, but yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what the weekend's going to bring. So who knows? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Not, a, not by the a way, man, Florida. borrow your Hey Soul classics. <laughs> <laughs> no, my brother. <laughs> you got to buy your own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> love it. Oh, I absolutely love it. Well, Gregory, with that, you know, you who's got back in the room when they respond to that one. What do you, right. what do you, uh, what do you got going on for the rest of the weekend, Greg? I'm just going to wrap up, you know, all the, um, uh, holidays and birthdays that are happening in the winter. People need to stop fucking in the spring and, um, spring, dude, it's like literally summer. what it's there for. I guess so. And, uh, you know, tomorrow's Valentine's day. So, you know, uh, uh, I talked about black love 
you know, you can black love or love any way you want and um, enjoy your Valentine's Day. If you don't have a special someone, feel free to borrow someone else's. And if you don't want to mm-hmm. do that, then don't forget you don't do that. are always your own special someone. So enjoy your Valentine's Day. Ah, I would like to make sure all our TSG listeners make it to next Valentine's. So do not do that. Did not say that. <laughs> I said that is not a call to action. <laughs> Didn't I say borrow? I thought I said borrow. <laughs> that is not a call to action. Not a call That's, to action. I all said right. borrow. <laughs> keeping our keeping ourselves. I say off, what I say. Uh, well, first and foremost, I'm going to feed my kids. Uh, I will make sure to bring my sweetie a little something special on Valentine's Day. And I did plan us a date for the weekend because it's a Tuesday, Valentine's Day falling on a Tuesday with two kids who are, well, one number 10. That's about all we got. So, you know, it'll, it'll if we can, you know, uh, make it past nine o'clock, then, you know, we're golden, right? You know, without falling asleep. Hey, that's a, that's a hell of a time. That's a, a hell of a time. I don't want to be a middle child. <laughs> uh gabe i took care of that for you but <laughs> he's still man that kid that kid you bring is, home the double pain kid and you're like guess what <laughs> <laughs> all i'm saying is that kid had been born born first he wouldn't have had a brother because that kid is like up in our business every time i kiss my wife he's like stop it don't I think do you're that. doing some things wrong man i mean it could be wrong <laughs> Bro, yo, you ain't got a job <laughs> I don't know if you want to put that on wax, man. I don't know how Jeez. your family is going. Man, I'm going to kiss my wife on the kitchen counter. Fuck out of here. What you that's, know? What I te- that's what we end up telling him. Right. But good God. Good God. It's like, hey, this is how you open you floor plans it. really backfiring, isn't it? Completely. Right. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> Just look like, away look away kids it's how you got here exactly just you know any type of you don't, you don't need to see the, you don't need to see the recipe that's it you, know, you should baby boy them and one day make breakfast for twyla in the kitchen but you're just wearing an apron there you uh, go that'll, that'll do it <laughs> that'll, that'll scar just straight much. up baby just baby boy joining them just <laughs> much better <laughs> look at them like you want some eggs they want some eggs. <laughs> Do not punch one in the chest, though. Don't take it that far. Don't no, go full no, baby we boy. Won't go, we won't go that far with it. We'll yeah. just, uh, just kind of Your mistake it. was you went full baby boy. No one goes full baby no boy. No one goes full baby boy. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening. Hey, if you haven't, um, check on out in the episode description. There is a going to be a, a link to merch. So please buy the merch. Help Greg spread his wonderful artwork throughout the world and, uh, and spread that steam love that's you know we're talking we're talking black love we're talking steam love we need to we need to spread you know spread it all around push it wherever we can and just push that nefarious agenda of the steam gentlemen so we thank you for listening today we're going to come back in with you next monday with part two here of our black history bingo uh and in the meantime this is the birdman josh saying keep your heat up and keep your head of steam on